Okay, thank you all for thank you all for coming. My name is Kiho. I work at AWS, and then also working on a project called SCD. And my name is uh, Sam Bachelet, and I'm uh, I work for Red Hat, and I'm also working on SCD. So today we will talk about the project SCD, which is now CNCF project, CNCF project. And then we will present some of the initial ideas that we are working on to improve the cluster operation of SCD. Yeah. So typical SCD, SCD is distributed. So typical SCD cluster is distributed over five to, I mean three to five node for high availability. And then uh, SCD, so SCD server implement a Raft consensus algorithm. So Raft is like a leader based. So like, so in terms of a CAP theorem, SCD is CP system. So SCD for high availability, SCD is distributed while we uh, prioritize the consistency and then for tolerance. So what that means, SCD is to provide one logical cluster view of many physical servers. So as long as you maintain the connectivity with the quorum, the clust cluster should continue to work, even with the faulty network. So Raft is leader-based. So data is replicated from leader to follower, and then follower forward proposals to leader. And then uh, what that means, uh, And then Raft uh, server implement the Raft consensus algorithm. So let's see. So when you operate SCD, a lot of things can get can, can get go wrong. So let's say let, I can go this one. So let's say when you add a new member to like three node cluster. Uh, cluster size becomes, uh, so when you add a new member to a three node cluster, cluster size becomes from three to four. So in this case, so when you, so let's say you add a new member to a three node cluster, and then when leaders network, like, so when you add a new member, the new member joins the cluster with the empty data, which means they require more update from the leader node. And then, then leader's network becomes easily overloaded. And then when the leader's network bandwidth is all used up, the, the leader heartbeat may block or drop. In that case, the follower may election timeout and then like, trigger a new leadership election. So in SCD is leader based. So when you do not have a leader due to the leadership election, SCD cluster cannot process any client request. So what it so when you operate SCD cluster, SCD is distributed. So you must be prepared for network partition. So when the network partition happens, so in so when when you have a like leadership uh, network partition. So in this like three node cluster, so you like as long as you maintain the two active like maintain the active quorum in the cluster, SCD should continue to work. So in this three node cluster, you still the leader's partition still maintains the active quorum. So S, uh, this cluster should continue to work. But what if the leader's node becomes isolated? So in this case, leader does not maintain the active quorum, so leader like has to revert back to follower after election timeout, and then that can affect the cluster availability. But what if the leader, what if we have both? What if we have a network partition and then membership reconfiguration? So that would depends on the network topology, also depends on the cluster size, and then also depends on the size of quorum. So when you add a new member to a three node cluster, cluster size becomes four, and then size of the quorum becomes from two to three. And then in this case, we still have a, so this is like three and one partition. So for the three node partition, we still maintain the active quorum 
So leader does not lose the quorum. So that means like we still like can process the like client request. But this is this is not okay. So this is two and two partition. Neither of the partition maintains the active quorum. So this the leader will soon election timeout and then revert back to follower. So that can affect the cluster availability and then the client would need to wait until the new leader gets elected. So what if network partition happens first and then new member gets added? So in this case, so membership reconfiguration is a two-step process. So you issue a like, member add command first and then you start the new SCD process. So before we run the member add command, we had two active members out of three nodes cluster. But after we run the member add command, the cluster size becomes four. And then in this case, we only have our two active members out of four. So leader would lose the active quorum like from its partition and then revert back to follower. Again, affect the like, cluster availability. So this, the same logic applies to the OneNote cluster. So let's say you add a new member to the OneNote cluster, and the cluster size becomes two, and then you only have a, so before you run the member add command, you only have a one active node out of OneNote cluster, which is okay, but after you run the member add command, the cluster size becomes two, and then you have only one node out of two node cluster, which means that you just lost the quorum after member add command. So this getting worse if you pass the if you run the member add command with the wrong URL. So let's say you run the member add command with the invalid URL. So the member add command will still be applied by the wrapped. But the since the new member was misconfigured in the first place, the new member would never be able to join the cluster, which means that the the cluster would never be able to elect a new leader. And then like since you lost the, lost the leader, you cannot even like revert the membership reconfiguration either. So same applies to the multi-node cluster. So you, we have here like three-node cluster, and then you add a, you run the member add command with the invalid URL. So as soon as you apply the member add command, the cluster cluster size becomes four, and then quorum size becomes three. So here, like in the number two, we still have our three active node out of four node cluster. But like this cluster can now only tolerate one flaky member. So even the one node going down can make the whole cluster down. Because in that case, we would only have our two active members out of four node cluster. So SCD has become the critical component in Kubernetes, so we want to do better. So we want to protect SCD against like, misconfiguration, as I just explained. And then we also want to maintain the high availability during membership reconfiguration. So SCD learner defined as a new node state in Raft, and then learner node joins the cluster as a non-voting member. So what that means, it, the learner node neither vote or do, does not count towards the quorum. And then what that means that is uh, adding a learner node would not affect the cluster availability as much. So to simplify the workflow, you just run the member add command with the learner flag. And then like once the learner node is ready to be promoted, you just run the member promote command to promote the existing like learner node to the voting member. So once promoted, the learner node, now voting member would, count, would be counted towards the quorum, and then the quorum site would change. So for safety checks, so SCD server will validate the promote request for some safety checks, so in that case, so let's say the learner node has not caught up to the leader's log yet, like still behind. 
In that case, like SCT server, we reject or promote request. And to simplify, simplify the initial implementation, the learner would have only a limited set of features. So you cannot transfer leadership to the learner node, and then you cannot request the read or write from the learner node. So this is only meant to serve as a, like a standby node. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so just a quick raise of hands. Um, how many of you out there have used uh, SCD operator? Okay, and how many are currently still using SCD operator? So a few less, and is anyone using it in production? I saw someone, okay. All right, so um, I'm gonna be talking about persistent and durable SCD clusters using um, SCD operator. Um, so just kind of uh, an outline of what I'm gonna talk about. Um, we're gonna go over the definition of an, an operator, and then we're going to go through uh, the critical components of the operator, and we're also going to then look at what SCD operator does great, and then what really we can improve with SCD operator. And then finally, just a roadmap of uh, where the project's gonna be going in the next few months. Um, as some people have probably noticed, uh, etcd operator was a little bit in an unmaintained state for a period of time, and I've been working um, with uh, some of our team members to, to resolve that, so hopefully we'll be seeing some improvements soon. So, thank you for your patience. Okay, so an operator is, uh, represents human operational knowledge in software uh, to reliably manage an application. So what does that really mean? Okay, so in the case of um, the diagram here, we have a desired state, um, we have current state, and then we have our controller. Um, so the controller is basically gonna attempt to reconcile the difference between current state and desired state. And to do that, there's two main components. So the first component is the custom resource definition. So the CRD gives us access to uh, gives us the capability to extend the Kubernetes API. Um, and this gives us access to custom um, resource um, objects, much like the, um, the built-in um, objects uh, resources, such as a, as a pod. So this would be an example of a, um, a built-in um, resource. And the, um, the second um, component is the custom controller. So the custom controller is the logic um, that combined with the custom resource definition uh, gives us a, access to a declarative API. And then with that API, we can um, define a desired state. So this is, the combination here is, is very powerful. Okay, so to install etsy operator is uh, very straightforward. Um, this is uh, literally just a clone from the, uh, the repository um, using the example, um, this deployment um, if we were to apply and then do a get against uh, custom resources, we would see that uh, the package um, programmatically defined uh, three custom resources for us. So at this point, we have access to SCD clusters. We also have access to um, SCD restore and SCD backup. And for the remainder of the talk, I'm gonna focus mostly on the um, SCD cluster resource. All right, so let's go back to uh, the diagram. And now that we have uh, our resources um, available to us, we're going to define a desired state. So in this example, we're gonna do a three node cluster and we're gonna specifically um, use etcd version 3.3.10. Okay, so as far as the controller's concerned, its, it's tasks are to um, populate the configuration to facilitate a cluster and then also to to deploy the pods um, to Kubernetes as well. The um, YAML representation of that definition is, um, is this, this is what this would look like. Um, so you can see that we're making a call against the NCD cluster resource. Um, in the spec, we're defining a size of three and a specific version of that CD as well. 
so if we were to apply this, we could see um, if we did, um, and then did a get against pods, we can see that there's uh, three etcd um, instances running. Um, so this is great. Um, this is a very quick process, um, and it worked as expected. But we still want to do a little bit of a sanity check to make sure this is a valid cluster. So we just did a quick um, a member list against one of the, the pods. And we can see that there are three members um, in the cluster and that one of those members is the leader. So this looks uh, pretty sane. So at this point, um, etcd operator has done, uh, done its job. Um, it has taken the uh, desired state of a three node cluster, reconciled that against Kubernetes um, to give the current state of a three node cluster. So now that we're at this point, let's kind of take a little bit of a look into how etcd operator um, did this, right? So what were the, the steps? So if we were to, to, to describe the first um, pod that was initialized, we'd see it as actually a single node cluster, which you, know, you may or may not have assumed. Um, so the reason uh, for this is because when we declare the resource, we can de declare a size. And to scale up and scale down the cluster, we're going to use a cluster API. So it, that would involve using, like for example, member add, right? So um, this is how etcd operator scales the cluster. So if you look at the second node, you'll see that that increments, and then of course the third would uh, would do the same. So this is this is smart, right? So in the case of a failure, uh, it can recover. Um, so that's um, that's working. All right, so we've went through kind of um, where etcd operator does great as far as uh, you know, kind of easy task, um, starting a three node cluster. We define a version, that's pretty straightforward. But now let's look at some failure cases. So in the case of a single node failure, the etcd, um, etcd still maintains quorum. So we can still use the cluster API. Um, so in this case, uh, the controller task would include um, first removing the failed uh, member, um, and removing uh, the, the pod, and then doing a member add um, and, and launching a new pod, um, bringing the, um, the total number of active members back to three. And then on the code end of things, we can, if we take a look, the code's very easy to follow. Um, this is against, this is a, a snippet from Cluster Reconcile. And if we take a look here, we can see that we're actually doing um, calls to etcd using client v3. So uh, if you look at the top there, you'll see uh, this is actually a member add command. And then below that, if you look at, um, you'll see uh, create pod. And if we were to kind of follow that back far enough, we'd see eventually that this was a call to, to v1 pod. So we're talking about using the Kubernetes client go. So SCD operator has succeeded, right? Uh, has taken uh, a failure state of a single node that would have required manual interaction with the API and has solved for that, right? So this is, this is a great example of, of what it does well. So, so now let's kind of go through where this can go a little sideways. So, in the case of a multi-node failure, then things get a little more complicated. Um, because we've lost quorum now, we can no longer interact with the API and, and get, uh, get out of the situation with the cluster um, API. So to resolve this situation, we require a snapshot restore. So although there is a restore um, operator uh, within um, etcd operator, um, if there was to be say all three nodes were to fail, um, the, the data and the pods themselves are ephemeral. So if we were to lose all of that, we would, the only, uh, the last known good state of the data would be the last um, snapshot. So there's a possibility of some data loss there if we were to use that route. Uh, the, the inevitable thing here is that this will fail and SD operator cannot um, solve this problem by itself. So, how can we make this better? Um, persistent volume support. So this is um, 
this was a big um, addition. So the initial support was added uh, via PR um, 1861. And basically by having persistent volume support, we can uh, have the data directory um, persist um, outside of the life cycle of the pod, right? And that's really important in this case because the data underlying is what uh, SCD needs to, to operate. So in this case, um, so now etcd operator has another tool in its tool chain. Instead of just doing a restore or um, doing uh, the, using the uh, cluster um, API, we can now look at recy uh, recycling the pods, right? So, so how would that work? So let's go back to the multi-node failure. So in the case of this multi-node failure, etcd has lost quorum and, <clears throat> and this would as far as the operator goes, require uh, some type of uh, restore from snapshot. But um, if we were to actually just unmount the PVC from the pod, restart all three pods with the same configuration and name, etcd would come back up um, and etcd would operate uh, as if there was no problem because there isn't. So that problem would be solved. So the result is a healthy cluster. This is, this is pretty big. Um, it's a lot more complicated than it looks. There's failure cases that we need to work through, but um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. So just uh, a few of the future goals for the project. Um, so we are maintaining it more now. We're hoping to get some of the, the features. Um, it, there's a lot of outstanding PRs we're trying to work through. Um, of course, we need to solve for corner cases in uh, PV and PVC um, failures. Um, and we definitely want to add uh, learner support um, for durability and, uh, and efforts to move to a 1.0 release. So. so upgrading SCD is another challenge when you work on distributed systems. So right now, So SCD, so SCD has a concept called a cluster version. It is a string value agreed by the Chrome, like majority of the cluster. So this is how SCD upgrade works. So leader first now get the like so get the version server version value from each peer, and then leader picks the lowest server version value like out of all those server versions, and then leader picks the lowest server version value as a cluster version and then broadcast the, the cluster version value to the peers. And then the each peer, now the follower, we try to apply that cluster version value to the server. And then this will fail if the cluster version is a downgrade to the server. So in order to prevent the downgrade as of like SCD 3.3, so the new SCD member would fail to join the cluster if the cluster version, if the like new member server version is lower than the cluster version. So in order to verify all these steps, upgrade must happen incrementally. So when you upgrade the SCD cluster, you just upgrade one by one. So this is how SCD, so this is how like leader picks the cluster version. So first, leader fetches the server versions from each peer. And then in this case, leader's gonna pick the lowest like, version value. So when you have a 3.3 and then 3.4, the cluster version will be selected as a 3.3. So here we have a new member with the like, server version 3.2. So if this member try to join the 3.2, 3.3 cluster, it would fail in order to prevent the downgrade. So when you when you upgrade a city, there are still a lot of things that can go wrong. So we want to do better. So we are introducing introducing the downgrade feature. So you, when you run the SCD call downgrade command. Like we can temporarily whitelist this like lower version value, like as a target version, and then we're gonna provide API that you can check the progress of downgrade, and then we will we will also provide 
the command that you can cancel the like downgrade feature. So Wenjia from Google is working on this, and then we're gonna add this feature to the SCD 3.4. All right, um, so extensible discovery. So etcd um, offers various bootstrap um, options. Um, probably the most interesting, I think, is uh, the SRV discovery. Um, but what we want to be able to do is uh, support multiple discovery mechanisms. Um, unfortunately, doing that within the server really isn't maintainable. Um, so we're looking at, uh, so basically what I'm talking about is, um, is some ideas for, uh, for basically moving uh, discovery mechanism out of the server and into the client. So back to the, uh, the SRV discovery. Um, SRV discovery is really um, interesting because you can define um, the, a lot of your um, information in the SRV um, details of the DNS entries. So um, at that point, you can minimize your configuration um, because that data will be consumed um, during the, the SRV query. The problem is we've gone probably uh, half or three quarters of the way. If you look at the, the highlighted areas, there's still quite a bit of dynamic information um, that would still need to be populated in this config, right? Um, so, for example, we're listening to all, but we may need to listen to a specific IP. So all this information needs to be populated um, in the config. So I, this is where um, we're looking that we can, we can do better. So this is an initial proposal. Um, so it's still uh, in its infancy, um, but I hope to uh, get something together in the next few weeks uh, on paper. Um, and basically the idea uh, is name cluster admit. And basically how this works is, first of all, what if this was um, the configuration required for SRV discovery. If you take a look at this configuration, it's completely static. There's no, there is nothing um, identifying features of the uh, node itself, no IP, domain name, et cetera. So this greatly simplifies deployment. When you are deploying this config, um, you don't have to worry about the, um, the values and the reason why is because the discovery has already occurred before etcd even starts. So this is done on the client level. And then by having the code on the client side, it's easier to extend, right? So if you want to write your own discovery, um, it's not that big of a deal because the server doesn't have to support it. So let's kind of go through how that works. So again, this is generally at a high level. The client would just have a single flag, and this is basically, um, those of you familiar with SRV discovery, the client already has uh, this mechanism. So we're just going to consume the results, um, and from that list, we can, we, we are certainly smart enough to know which IP is ours, right? Or we can do a DNS query to see which uh, which of this list is, represents this particular node. So we can extract that information and then uh, persist it uh, to the member bucket of the data store. So once that's persisted on the server side, we can uh, set a bool or um, something different, <laughs> but uh, basically just letting etcd know that those values could be at, at the store and then if they aren't, then fall back to the um, existing functionality. So kind of a visual of, um, of what I just kind of went through there, we'll kind of show the different layers. So at the top layer, we have our um, DNS SRV records, okay? And then as we move down into the client, the client is gonna do a SRV query against the DNS and the results then it's going to use to populate the member struct. Um, so this is very similar to what happens in the server, but we're going to also persist uh, the client URL as well. Um, so at this point, um, we're gonna save that into the member bucket, and, and that's the basic um, process. So this is all great and dandy, but Let's talk about a basic use case. So if we were to go back to the operator example um, where we were deploying an initial cluster, 
and we had to wait for each node to increment. Well, if we wanted to provision, um, if we wanted to provision um, new, um, new data layer as well, um, you know, this can all take time, right? So, in this case, uh, with uh, with the um, with what I talked about, we could do it in an init container, and basically, when the initialization took place, we could uh, do our discovery and populate uh, the data, uh, basically seed the data for the members um, during the uh, startup process, and so at that point, we could start all of the nodes at the same time, right? So if it's just five nodes, uh, if it was three, uh, we wouldn't have to wait. So this is just a, an example of a, of a use case. Thank you. Yeah, we have five minutes for Q&A. Yeah. Going back to who provided context, the client is the instruction user populating the uh, memory buffer. Mm -hmm. How are the clients writing that memory buffer if the server is writing the memory buffer? Well, so the server, uh, the client still needs to have that capability to basically start a RAF node and do and persist uh, to the data source. So you, you're you're doing the same operations of the server, but it's much more condensed, right? So it's it's not a full server implementation. But as far as writing to the member bucket, doing a put, uh, you know that that would have to be part of the client. Well, because the underlying data is still intact, right? So as far as um, the data directories are concerned, they are uh, on the uh, persistent volume themselves, right? So if the pod, uh, if the pods were to fail, you know, we can basically, uh, the life cycle of that pod isn't connected directly to the, to the persistent volume. So if we were to restart those pods with the exact same names, um, and the persistent volume uh, per, and, this, and the per PVC, when that starts, then uh, the, the etcd, as far as it's concerned, would still be, would run. Does that make sense? I mean, it, it doesn't know that that happened. Actually, for that use case, we have uh, something, some feature called like a mirror maker. So it has like a like low latency. So you just like consistently like watch from the existing cluster, and then you just uh, mirror the data from the other cluster, and then you can use that like the mirror like mirrored node as a fallback. But like in terms of a uh, geo like the like replicated like the data center like deployment. You can like still tune the like uh, heartbeat timeout and the election timeout. So there are like many other ways to do it. But for the like if you have the learner node, you can also use like learner to have a like fallback like a node in like different data center. So I think the, so, can we set the mic? Would you mind repeating that? I'll get this to you. I couldn't hear you, just so that everyone can hear you as well. Uh, so uh, what we are trying to do is that uh, they're already, we are trying to upgrade the HCD host VM. So in order to do that, and we have attached persistent volumes. Now to do that, we unmount that persistent volume, we upgrade our host VM, and then remount that HCD. Right. The, uh, remounted volume to the HCD and then try to do add member. 
the like we are trying to add it to etcd cluster mm -hmm. which which already has the data it's not like a it's a, it's a new member with all the data existing Right, so, so to answer, yeah, so, so basically we're not using this to extend the cluster, we're just, we're basically, in the case of a failed pod, we can recycle the underlying data store, but we're not extending the size of the cluster. So we can't just replicate it uh, n times and then start etcd, that wouldn't work, because we still have to populate the, um, One more question. I'm really just getting into uh, this, and there's definitely a ton of corner cases, even just in uh, the last few weeks of work. So, I mean, there are concerns. Um, so, it's something that you know, that we'll have to, to solve around. But yeah, there, there is concern. Thank you. Thank you.